I'm walking on a 500mm thick post tension concrete slab constructed for SA Breweries in Alberton, just south of Johannesburg. The slab was constructed for SA Breweries' Bali tank farm. We needed a big concrete slab for some 31 malt and barley silos, each silo of diameter some 13 meters with uh, 24 columns carrying over 1500 tons of product, resulting in very high point loads of the order of about 60 tons per leg, each silo with some 24 legs. And this required a substantial slab. With a conventional slab, we uh, would have ended up with a slab thickness of over one meter and an extended construction period. The solution that we opted for in the end after considering a conventional concrete slab is a post-tension slab as supplied by PD PAVE. The design opted for by PT PAVE was a 500 millimeter thick post-tension slab that compared very favorably in terms of construction re uh, time requirement as well as cost. The PT slab solution was faster and it was more economical in terms of uh, capital cost and program to construct compared to the conventional reinforced concrete solution that was put forward by uh, the engineer initially. The solution brings definite advantages in that it's unjointed and secondly we could dovetail construction with the other construction activities on site. The construction of the slab took a total of six weeks. The first two weeks was primarily for preparation and then the construction was then executed over a period of four weeks. Preparation work for every pour was done during the week. This is now the earthworks preparation, the laying down of the plastic, the fixing of the cables. These are the post tension cables that run through the slab. It's interesting to note that you will see that in this particular case, whereas normally with a post tension ground slab, the cables are placed in the center of the slab. In this particular case, it was slightly below the centroid. And the success of this is determined by the, uh, the compression force which is exerted by the cables into the concrete and that controls the cracking and that stops any shrinkage cracking in the slab. Okay, we're standing looking at the original plan of the, um, of the slab and this shows you the construction joints, the slab paneling and the, and the cable configuration. The total area of phase one, the first area was plus minus 5,200 square meters. They're split into four pores, as you can see there, there's your construction joints. This was pore one, this is pore two, pore three, pore four. The cables ran all the way through, and as each pore was completed, it was stressed using intermediate anchors in those positions. When the next pore was done, it was stressed with an intermediate anchor in this position, and this slab panel was then pulled up against this one, so the two was pulled together. And the same would apply to this one. This one would be stressed with an intermediate anchor in this position. And this slab panel, when it's stressed in that position, would be stressed up against uh, this slab panel. So this construction joint could then never open up. During the week, the tendons were placed and then on Saturdays concrete could be cast which also solved a major transport problem having highly trafficked highways. With any of the pours we had in excess of 90 trucks coming to the site and uh, with normal traffic that would have been a major congestion, delays etc causing difficulties in finishing the surface or getting a good surface. As you can see, we've got a very good surface. We've got two specification in terms of levels, also a factor to be considered here. 
With concrete clearing, we were fortunate that uh, the weather played its role um, without affecting it adversely. The curing compound was put on uh, after uh, placing of the, of, of the concrete and we had no, no problems with surface cracking, uh, even hair cracking. The surface is perfect. This project was, was quite a challenge and it was an interesting challenge because the, uh, the normal post-sentient concrete pavement that, that PT Pave gets involved in is normally not more than 200 millimeters thick. In this particular case, we ended up with a 500 millimeter thick post-tension pavement, which was quite a challenge to, uh, to fix and to place the concrete because of the, the thickness of concrete. And from what we've experienced here, we will utilize it on various other sites as well. Our satisfaction is actually described by the client and, and the, we have a very, very happy and satisfied client because the project was delivered in time to schedule and it was delivered within budget.